All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. It's so beautiful to see everyone here in this virtual room. Thank you for taking the time. And um, I'm totally excited because we're really connected uh, yeah, with two parts of the world here. Um, my name is Maike, I'm the founder of Ocean Now. Um, and we, today we have an event called uh, Memories of Our Future Waters, an intuitive path with Felipe Duarte. Um, uh, alongside Felipe, there's Mariana Rivera and uh, Yuri Handelson. So Felipe is a mediator of indigenous culture and indigenous knowledge. Uh, Mariana is joining us from Coral Studios and Yuri um, Handelson from Duca Film. We've got a slightly extended uh, program. It's going to be really exciting. And um, yes, so. They are all tuning, the three of them are tuning in from uh, Bogota in Colombia, where it is, I think, yeah, midday now. Yeah, approximately midday. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I'm your host tonight and uh, alongside there's Divya from the Ocean Now team who's the co-host today. Um, so um, a few technical things up front. Um, I know you all uh, like put yourself on mute, which is great. Thank you so much. Um, we are absolutely happy with you switching on the video. Um, later on, we can also unmute our microphones um, when we get to the questions. Um, uh, camera is absolutely fine. We're happy with you switching them on. Um, and uh, if you have any questions up front, um, sometimes it's like that, that questions come up. You can send them to Divya directly. So D-I-V-Y-A in the chat. So in the chat, you can see in the bottom right, there's like a blue drop down menu and you can just send a question to Divya. And so she will collect the questions. It might be that some questions cover, like are kind of can be grouped or so, and we'll answer them in a grouped way. But also we will switch on like microphones later and you can ask your question via video and sound also. Um, also one more technical thing, uh, you might have missed this just now in the Facebook um, event. I posted it, it was a last minute thing, but because it's going to be very interactive today, um, it would be nice if you get a pen and paper. Um, so if you haven't got that yet, now would be the moment to look for it. I know it's not obvious that you have this next to you all the time, but yes, yeah, so um, it would be great uh, uh, if, you, if you get it now. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm really excited to have you on board today, Philippe. This is amazing. I, I'm so glad it works out. Uh, you already joined our opening last week um, and yes, the opening, I can also mention this, we, we're running a virtual uh, event program right now. You probably saw um, Ocean Now is, is running this pro program called Inseparable on our relationship with the ocean and nature. Um, so just one word uh, and I'm handing over in a minute to you, Felipe, um, but one maybe quick word on where we know each other from. So. Um, I met Philippe last year at an event, uh, Yoga for the Future, and um, and yeah, it was so beautiful, the, the stories and the, wis the wisdom we could learn from him um, on water, and like it was so connected with what we do at Ocean Now that we kept in touch, and um, we really appreciated his workshop, and today is like leaning onto this also, um, really happy to broaden, to extend our knowledge, um, uh, so we had a workshop with him, with our team in January. And yeah, so I'm really glad this works out in a virtual way today. It's a little experiment, um, but yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's so, so nice we can all get together. Um, and with this said, uh, I am handing over the microphone to you, Philippe, if you like. Uh, hello, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> So thank you, Mike, for the invitation. Thank you, everyone in Ocean Now. I know a few of you guys there already from the workshop, also from, from the previous yoga event. Um, I'm, um, as Mike was say, saying, I've been working in the last years um, to remind ourselves um, that we are all somehow coming from a native background so it's not just um, the close native um, blood related 
uh, indigenous who who have all this wisdom about uh, the connection that we have with nature but actually they are starting to 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 need everyone uh, of us to wake up and to remember that we are all native and that all of this wisdom even if it has been forgotten they are they are here ready as schools as universities to share that information with us because it's up to us how the earth the planet and the life as we know it um, can uh, really develop in a in a human way um, listening to the to the guidance of their of their words so um, because of that i'm i'm um, also really happy to be part of this event um, and one of the things that we care a lot about is how we understand the water so today i'm going to be touching some elements related to what how we see the water how we understand the water i will talk i was even thinking yesterday if i should talk more about the ocean or the water but um the thing is that the water is is huge when we think about the water the ocean is part of the different waters that there are so we consider waters are um like the ocean is one of the waters states of water the river but also the clouds and many others so i'm going to be talking in general about the waters but hopefully we all have the consciousness to 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 understand that the the ocean is at this moment the biggest water source um, for the rest of the world so it's like the heart pumping water through evaporation to the clouds or rivers coming back down into the into the waters of the ocean so i will i will be saying a little bit more about this um and mike i don't know if you wanted to say something but you're sorry i was just muted um i can see people joining can you please mute yourself um i just tried to mute, mute uh, sorry now i just unmuted the person actually again Okay, perfect. So, welcome um, everyone. Hello. And um, just to begin with, if you can see the screen that I'm sharing, um, just as you arrive, please, I forgot to put mute your microphone, but if you, if you can just on a piece of paper, write a skill, one skill you have. I'm, I'm a good painter. I'm good talking with people. I'm good uh, remembering things, whatever you think you're, it, it's a good skill of yours. Um, then write down the strongest sense if you're very good with your sight with your taste with your touch smell or hear just one one of them that you consider this is one of my this is my strongest sense um, then um, write also your biggest dream whatever the dream is uh, but write it in using less than five words so resume everything just uh, just like like key keywords so if you want to live in a huge house on top of the mountain next to the next to the ocean then uh, just put a uh, big house ocean mountain or something like that just keywords um that that bring you to this um to this dream and finally write one thing that you know about the water one one thing that you can share as knowledge of the water i know the water is um uh, 75 percent um, of the state of the of the matter in the world is uh, in water state or i know there is x amount of um, microplastic particles in the water anything anything you know about the water um, just write it down about the ocean about the rivers about the lakes anything related that with water that you know And in the meantime, I'm going to leave you with a short introduction to a video. So I would, I would uh, like to introduce Yuri. He's, um, I've been working with Yuri. We met in, in Berlin, also in the organization of different events. 
Um, we work together also organizing retreats and, and trying to bring these words to a ceremony, to circles of words around the fire where we sit and we share um, this ancient knowledge. But at the same time, we are documenting uh, here in Colombia the words and the knowledge and the way uh, we live when we are in a community. Especially, specifically, we focused on the Arhuaco community. They live in La Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. That's considered one of the, the heart of the world. Uh, it's a beautiful mountain that from sea level to the peak, it's around 5,000 to 6,000 uh, meters above sea level. Um, and it contains almost all the different variety of, uh, of vegetation, different uh, temperature floors. And because of that, it's considered to be a micro organism, like a micro representation of what the entire planet is. And the communities living there are considered to be the guardians of what happens all around the world. So Yuri um, will introduce uh, yeah, a little bit of what we're going to see. Just a few words. Um, well, the first one is about the fact that I think arts are tuning on this kind of matters and subject. Uh, and this is a very good news. So we have been there uh, working close with the community, learning a lot also of how the way you do it, uh, filmmakers are used to just grab reality maybe, but in this case it was totally different. We had, we had very short time for uh, shooting and what is uh, going to be showed is uh, we are uh, carrying uh, in order to realize a bigger a documentary movie about them or about the situation there. And the very nice thing that I've been experiencing there is uh, the nature, it is not, uh, is not attached, you know, in the Western country, we kind of have this feeling that it's there, but it's not part of us. And uh, I could learn from them very easily how it is a very basic thing to be in contact uh, with this intelligent organism, which is, uh, as we know, also now reacting to the whole situation that is happening. So it is an intelligent organism. And the, the time we spent uh, talking a lot with the community was to get like trust in order to realize these words. And uh, one part of this trust you can see into the translation because uh, it is, uh, sometimes we, we use a very funny English, I would say, but it is the, the, there is the attempt of um, tran tran translating the words of the indigenous as they speak and not just as the English language is because uh, already to use language is part of uh, 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 of kind of formament is the Latin say of a way of thinking. So it is very important to get into this way of thinking in order to understand. So enjoy the little short pieces and yeah, talk so. Okay, so here I'm sharing, um, I'm sharing the sound, I'm sharing everything. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. El agua para nosotros es la sangre de, de, de cada uno. Entonces por eso nosotros tenemos que ofrendar a los a los padres, a las lagunas, que también son donde, o sea, son lagunas que están, que son madres, donde están las madres del, del, del agua, de los arroz son nacederos. Una de las cosas que nosotros nunca hemos estado de acuerdo, por ejemplo, con, la, con las represas. Porque si a nosotros nos cortan una vena y nos conectan algo y lo conectan a otro lado para que funcione, o sea, pero ahí tenía que pasar con esta. Más de eso, el agua está haciendo una función. Por ejemplo, aquí en la sierra son 35 ríos. Ustedes son 35 ríos que nacen, que se, ya son ríos que ya están llegando en, en, en el mar. Esa es el agua, tiene una función con el espíritu esa de, que está en el agua, pasa como de las 8 en adelante, él sube. Él sube como una brisa y baja ya como de 3 a 2 de la, de la do, 3 a 3 y media de la, de la mañana. Ahí cuando él baja, él baja recogiendo toda esa clase, toda clase de enfermedad, todo lo que pasa en el día, toda clase de enfermedad. Si uno, uno se baña bueno, estando enfermo, estando con rabia, el agua también es, una, es, una, es, una, es un ser, es una madre, que también si yo estoy enfermo, o sea, le entrego el agua, ella también nos purifica. 
toda esa clase de enfermedad, toda esa clase de, de peste, de destructora de los animales, de, de la planta, y ella lo va llevando. Eso lo cae al mar. Y allá donde está, donde está el mar, también allá lo va convirtiendo en allá lo van convirtiendo en alimentos para la madre, para el mar. Entonces, por eso nosotros siempre tenemos una función y queremos que ojalá todos tengamos esa misma, tengamos esa misma línea, que el agua no los debe maltratar. So this is um, this is the film for for a part of, of what we've been working on. We're still working on it. Um, there are different things that we want to to share as a bridge somehow to to bring their knowledge into us. But today we're focusing on the water and their knowledge about the water. Um, so maybe when you wrote something that you knew knew about water. Um, or about the ocean, about the lakes, about the rivers. Um, maybe at least if you didn't know something, at least now you know um, an interesting perspective of how the water is understood in the communities. And I would like to open a very fast um, sharing of what do you know about the water? And if you can just write it down on the, on the chat, anything that you know. Um, I will be reading this information and in the meantime I would I will uh, dive a, li a little bit into what he was saying um, for for the native the water is information so the water as, as, a, as a micro molecule or as an, as, as an atom and tinier than that it would be just energy that carries information this energy The way the energy is um, is um, is functioning somehow, the way it's it's taught to behave, this this uh, piece of water in the tiniest uh, proportion, it's containing certain information that tells the water to behave or to be in this way and in that way to materialize as water. And if we understand that, that water is information and the snow peaks and every place that, contain, that contains snow high above the mountains or in the North uh, Pole, all this frozen water, uh, it's understood as frozen information. So it's basically a hard drive. It's like if we have, um, if, if we're extraterrestrials that come to this planet and we don't know how to read a hard drive or a CD, and we just take that and we, we consider that that is a stone because we don't see any purpose. We don't see how to understand that, that inside this, this CD, uh, CD um, there is information or inside a USB stick there is information. We just look at it and we think, oh, it's a piece of aluminum or it's a piece of whatever. In the same way they understand water, it's, it holds the information from everywhere. Water holds every single piece of molecule that brings information from a town, from a mountain, from uh, a lake, from a river, and all the rivers flow through cities. And all the cities, depending how they are, how they behave, they leave their information within the rivers. So if we understand, um, if we see a river that is polluted, we also understand that the city is polluted, that the city is sick. Um, and the water flows to the ocean and the ocean receives all this information. So the ocean already contains all the information that has been transferred from rivers or from so water sources like lakes down through the rivers into the ocean and the ocean contains all the information of how sick or how healthy the world is. All the animals, all the humans, all the spirits living within this earth. And for that reason it's so important that we understand that water is not just this idea of having a plastic bottle of water, because that actually we already understand as dead water. For us, water, the, the, the word of water, already translated to Spanish or to English, um, within their original language, it already con uh, it contains the word, the idea of flow. So to be water, alive, 
to be leaving water, it needs to flow. As soon as you put it in a, in a, in a plastic bottle, in a, even in a glass bottle, as soon as you trap the water and you sell it, this is water that doesn't flow. This water is called dead water. And it's interesting to think as well how, how the water, how we relate sometimes our behaviors, our planetary behaviors, our consumistic behaviors, our marketing behaviors, our business behaviors in such a way that we think it's okay. We have a way, we have developed a way that we can bottle water and we put it there and then we can drink water that it's clean, it's good for us. So, so instead of really understanding, we need to stop polluting the original water so that we don't have to clean the water again and then sell it as a private thing that not everybody will have access probably in the future, we don't know. So all of these way of thinking and understanding the water, it's um, giving somehow the title of, of today, which is Memories of the Future Water. How we remember the water, it's how we create the water of the future. The memories that we have, if we have forgotten what the value of water is, because maybe we, we were never taught the, the, the deep meaning of water, then we will continue behaving in such a way that the waters of the future will be completely disaligned from, from the real essence of water. So we're gonna dive into remembering right now. We're gonna start remembering, and by remembering, we don't need to just remember what the water is according to all the indigenous communities. We need to remember who we are. That's the important thing. And this is something that from the native, it's very important that we understand our origin. If we understand our origin, we will understand the relevance and the, and the importance of water. And to understand our origin, we need to start seeing the world with a, with a higher developed uh, understanding of knowledge and for that there is recent knowledge all the knowledge that we know that we reach through reasoning our thoughts and then there's the intuitive knowledge and this is the knowledge that we have forgotten about this is knowledge that we don't trust because we like to see things uh, proved after an experiment or a paper that, that says that this is finally proved, or a National Geographic documentary, or a, um, the news is saying this, so then I believe the news. But what we have to stop doing is we need to stop thinking that all the proof information is the only truth. And we have to start waking up our intuition so that from our intuition, we can really find deep, valuable, information that we can consider knowledge and this is what the native have been doing for years centuries millennials so the information that exists from them it's information that the west might consider crazy or um, i don't know like unnecessary old-fashioned not truth uh, so many things that we believe our native indigenous con uh, contain within their knowledge um, that are not necessarily uh, speaking in an advanced way, but the reality is that we're not speaking about the past and about old ancient uh, knowledge. They have been here present all the time. They have been existing every single bit of our history. They have been there living parallel to the life that we've been living. It's just that the news maybe doesn't speak of that reality. But the reality is not old, it's not ancient, it's not the past, it's, it's the present. And this is somehow what we're doing to, to bring this knowledge and to understand this is happening, this is knowledge, this is truth. And we just need to complement our idea of truth in the West, our idea of knowledge. So for that, I would do um, a quick a drawing and understanding of what we can do. I'm going to share here um, again my screen. What we can do to um, wake up our intuition, um, but also to understand what intuition is. Uh, what intuition is, and I need to. The, the screen share and whiteboard. Uh, uh, screen share. The name, I think. 
and whiteboard, yeah. So and here I'm, I'm just understanding how to use this fun tool. <laughs> so I'm gonna draw a little bit how we understand uh, our reality and how that reality is understood from intuition. We have basically this. So you have heard probably that we are all having a body. Sorry, are you are you able to to see my screen right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, excellent. Um, then there's the mind. So we have the body and we have the mind. We have our body, our physical uh, ma matter that we are in control of, or sometimes we're in control of. And then there's the of being ourselves, of being me, the I, the I. I do this, I do that. My hand for it from the rest of the reality. This is my mind and my thoughts are mine. They belong to me and therefore when I think something, it's me and it's separate from the other people. This is the idea that we have. And this has not even been able, this, ha this hasn't been proved to the understanding of where our mind and our consciousness come comes from. So um, this is just to complement somehow from our native uh, knowledge how we understand this. These are just materialization. Our mind is also a materialization, like a physical material representation of who we are. And between the, the body and the mind, they both create what we consider the spirit. So we are, our spirit is a spirit of happiness if we raise our body energy and our mind energy with the spirit of being happy. If we are uh, lazy, boring, uh, angry all the time, our spirit will be this. And this is the spirit that we will share. But the spirit is just like a manifestation of all the things that we are as the energy that we share to the outside. However, inside of us, there is something different that it's what we would consider the real us, and this is the soul. So inside of us, we have a soul that is just energy that already knows where to go. It's like if you are, if you are a water drop, you are part of the ocean, and, and as a water drop, you would only exist, for example, in the Niagara Falls or in any waterfall. You actually separate from whatever piece of water you are, and you will fall as a tiny drop. That tiny drop is just a piece of the biggest, bigger waters. It's just a tiny moment of falling down that we understand as, as our life. Our life is just the drop of the water from that entireness of, of where it used to belong as water. As a, as a river or as, a, as the ocean, going through this idea of separation of just me, myself, and just in a constant fall until you rejoin again into the big ocean or the big water source again. And this process is just the, the idea that we have of being individual, of being separate. But it's just an instant and we will still be water. That's our soul. It's just the essence, it's just the, the nature that's existing inside ourselves. Our soul is always knowing, always knowing what's the right direction, always knowing what we are, who we are, where we belong to. It's knowing absolutely everything. It's the pure energy that is within ourselves. But as soon as we get into this specific life, the body and the mind get distracted by the beauties that exist in this world our senses start distracting our soul. So delicious food, amazing thoughts, uh, beautiful dreams. And then our spirit starts building upon this idea of where are we going to develop ourselves? What we need to find and what are our, our, the ceremonies and the rituals and the way we live within the communities are finding is that we need to find 
a way in which our soul speaks directly to the spirit or our soul develops the spirit directly and our mind and our body are not the ones developing this, the spirit but our mind and our body are in service of the soul in service of the heart inside this soul inside this heart is the intuition intuition is that information that it's so clear that comes from inside us and more than inside us it comes from the entire universe from the greater consciousness from what we call our creators father mother um, so many different names we can call it buddha we can call it god we can call it whatever we want but from this bigger consciousness our soul already knows where we're going already knows what water is already knows what earth is and already understands that we are water we are made of water we are earth we are made of earth our thoughts are made of thunder strikes like fire we are we are all the elements and these elements are in the exact same proportions in our body as they are in the, in the planet so the planet is another body the planet is a bigger body and in this body the heart the thing that is pumping blood in and out of this body um, to reach every single molecule around our body this the, the job of the heart in our planet is the ocean the ocean is the heart of the entire planet and then we have the veins the veins that are uh, distributing this water out and back into and there are different veins some veins are through the skies as water vaporizes and then flow in huge rivers in the skies that we don't we're not able to see but they they exist and then they return back into us through rivers back to the oceans so it's this is uh, probably something we've learned in school to understand this, the cycle of water but we never understood that it's not just the cycle of water is the cycle of life of a huge living organism of a huge body and our soul and the soul of mariana the soul of yuri the soul of mike the soul of everybody of you guys connecting the, the soul of the planet the soul of the tree the soul of the stars the soul of the sun they are all connected and they all know everything they need to know but our mind and our body they want rationalized information they want information that you can reach through reasoning process and this reasoning process is something that we can only do i'm going to use stars <laughs> so when we have an idea i have this idea i have this next idea and I have this other idea, and I have this other idea, and this idea, and this, this is my life somehow, full of ideas, experiences. And then, in the way we're living in the West, we study, we go to school, and we go to school to make sense of, I wanna reach a conclusion. So the dream that you wrote on that piece of paper, to reach that dream, you will have a straight line. And that straight line will be like, from this star, uh, this is the beginning of my dream and then to go to this end star which is the end of my dream I have to do this and I have to do everything that is in line to that process so my, my rational way of thinking is in, a, in order to reach point B I have to I have to have passed through point A and before passing uh, through point A I have to have passed through another point and so on so we, we make our life as a linear process a linear process that's also a way of thinking linearly to reach our conclusion our conclusions everything that we write when we go to the academy when we go to study in the university we need to write with a bibliography and this bibliography is just to prove that whatever we think is a linear process of historically written information information that i can prove and i can stand on this point on that point and on that point and so on and so on so um what we do then is to train ourselves to do this differently to train ourselves to stop thinking linearly and to train ourselves to unlearn what we've learned and for that we allow ourselves to have back to to the previous all our scattered thoughts as these little stars all our scattered experiences and this happens when we go into meditation so the ways that we the way that we reach this is basically 
Um, I'm going to share another screen now. The way that we do this is through our thoughts, our words, and our actions. We need to start changing or reconstructing, reinventing our thoughts, our words, what we say, and our actions. Our thoughts through meditation. And through meditation, we will not do a meditation right now, but I would invite you um, to Sonido Sur or in Facebook or in Instagram. I regularly do a meditation every new moon, every full moon. There's also um, the, the girl who's doing a meditation the next day is also for the event um, with Ocean Now. So Mike can share a little bit of that later. Um, but just try, if you haven't meditated, um, the, the, to understand meditation connected to what I've been saying is you reach a, a point in which when you're inside yourself, everything is scattered. All your thoughts, all your dreams, all your um, doubts, or all your problems, all, all your solutions, everything exists there like the stars that I was painting. There's no linear, lineal way of reaching any conclusion. Everything coexists simultaneously. And from everything existing simultaneously, we're able to breathe the existence of everything that already is and believe that the solution will just manifest as a clear message that you will, as a behavior. It will just come to you. And you don't have to think or make a, ra a rational process in order to reach who you are, which is the most important thing. So that's one way in which we start raising and waking up our intuition, at least the intuition of our thoughts. Then I'm going to do an exercise right now of how we can dissociate or we can reinvent the way we speak because the way we speak, it's also a way in which we manifest our intuition. Then if you follow me, we will go to word dissociation and this will be an, ex an exercise of 20 seconds only. So do the following at home. If you want to open your mic, it will be a chaos, but it will be interesting. But if, if you want to keep it close as well, just at home or wherever you are, Look at the room where you are, and I will count down 20 seconds. And in these 20 seconds, point to as much objects that you can. And when you're pointing to those objects, say a word that is not related to that. So right now, you don't see it, but I'm pointing to, to a, a drawer. And I'm not going to say drawer. I'm going to say cat. So it doesn't make sense. Do this as fast as you can, as many words and objects as you can. Just point and say another thing. Don't, don't say the thing you're pointing at. Starting now, very fast, and say it out loud. Um, ball, <laughs> keyboard, <Okay>. guitar, <laughs> cat, <Chimney>. sky. <laughs> no. uh, Cravat. <laughs> Bonk. <laughs> uh, underwear. <laughs> okay, good. So that's 20 seconds of our dissociating time. What we're practicing with this, this association is that we start, I don't know how it was the experiment for you. At the end, we're going to share a little bit of how it was for us. Uh, for everyone in this moment we like uh, something in our brain is telling us that this is very stupid <laughs> so we have to think again and and really put an effort into naming a different word and sometimes we we lose like it's difficult to get words with so many words that already exist because it's it's ridiculous the process that our brain the rational process that our brain is doing is not making sense. And this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to not make sense and to learn what it is to live without sense, to learn what it is not to think rationally 
and to accept things even if they don't make sense. To accept the things and the words that come to us even if they are not making a rational sense in our, in our mind. Because the rational sense that we're making is based on a lot of information that we've learned only rationally. But all the space that we need to make for the intuitive knowledge is a space that is not going to make sense. We cannot make sense out of intuition. We, have, we can only trust it. We cannot make sense out of it. If we want to make sense out of intuition, we will go back to the rational way of thinking and we will reach another conclusion. So we have to learn how to capture the intuition as soon as it speaks, even if it doesn't make sense, and just as it is, accept it. So that's one exercise. And the other exercise I'm gonna to move to is action. So in this one, I would be very happy if we can all put our cameras, <laughs> uh, if you have a camera to turn it on, still leave the, the microphone off, and I'm going to screen some words here. So as soon as I screen the words, you will do the action. So an example, I will, uh, the, the word that appears there would be chair. And you, with whatever the camera grabs from you, so if you can only see from here up, or if you want to stand up or whatever, you and your body, you will represent that word. So if I say chair, <laughs> hey, Philip, quick, quick question. Can you uh, stop screen sharing and switch to gallery view so we can see each other? Ah, yeah. Because that would be better. Then we can all see each other. Yeah. Then from there, I don't know if from this. The, the top right, it's like gallery view. Um, yeah. It's like, yes. So there it works, right? So I just switched it on now. It works, yes. Is everybody on? on Okay, cool. Yes. So um, I'm going to write this down on the chat. I'm going to write the words in case um, uh, people cannot understand what I, when I say it, so at least you can read it. So let's start now. And you just do instantly, intuitively, how you believe that word is, okay? So, oh. yeah. so mountain. Taking a picture of all of you. <laughs> Good. Look. Let's do the next one and then look at the other ones. See how the other ones represent exactly the same. So now, start. Check out <laughs> the other ones. Look how the other ones are representing it. Look all these different types of stars that we have. Now, birds. <laughs> okay, now, uh, three. <laughs> Some people's tree looks just like the birds and like the stars. <laughs> okay, tree. Now, Water drop. <laughs> Good. So look from the water drop to the next one, ocean. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and now human being <laughs> that was easy <laughs> okay good yeah here that was beautiful. Thank you, everyone, <laughs> for being crazy for a little bit. Here, what we, what we want to understand is how we, we can also intuitively give an interpretation to words. 
And this interpretation, this is the job that our mamus or our taitas, our gayas, our um, uh, spiritual guides, the indigenous, or shamans, or uh, so many different people that are in, within this path. This is what they do. This is what they are. They are interpreters. They are interpreting and they are giving an interpretation to a language that we not, that not all of us understand, the language of nature. Nature speaks to us. It is a living being. The water speaks to us. It is a living being. We are made of water. Water is made of us. And what these spiritual guides are making, what they are doing, is they are guessing. They don't even say that they know. It's actually beautiful when you, when you speak to them and they know, the, the thing that they know is that they are guessing. I am guessing from what I can read in you and what I can read in nature. From what I can read of the energies of the place, I'm making my, get, my best guess. It's an interpretation. All they do is to make an interpretation and bring that information to us. And from centuries and millennials of interpretations, they have managed to reach solid information that, in which we are based now, in which our knowledge, our intuitive knowledge is based. They just believe and trust deeply in the interpretation they are giving. Their guess is always deeply believed within the community. And this that we're doing right now, when we, when we read a bird and we go like a bird or uh, whatever, interpretation we give to the word is also what we're manifesting to the world so we have to start tuning our our interpretation in a different channel and we need to start in getting this interpretation of what water is what a tree is what a rock is many people don't see life in a rock but a, a rock is constantly changing and transforming because it is alive and the way we read this information it's what we it's what comes inside of us and if we believe that there's no life in a rock we won't understand that there's life in the ocean and if we don't understand there's life in the ocean we will behave as the ocean doesn't need to be protected for life because it is not alive it is not living when we start changing our interpretation of things we will start behaving differently and we need to work into listening to our intuition because our intuition comes from our soul and our soul is already part of the earth. It's already part of, of the cosmos and our soul will know, don't do this, don't waste water, don't, uh, don't tiny little things that your soul, in you, if you start listening properly to yourself, you will start recognizing that when you put your boiler, your water boiler to boil and you just want to make one cup of tea and you put one liter of water, you will understand your soul already telling you, don't do that. You're, you're using a lot of energy to heat one liter and you're going to drink just one glass. And then you're going to need to heat again the next glasses whenever it comes. These tiny decisions, they are very tiny decisions, but this comes up only as we start, start to wake up to a different way to, to understanding and to interpreting what the world is already speaking to us. So with this, I'm going to sing a song because from the community where I'm uh, coming from, uh, which is where the, the city where I come from is Bacata, and from this city, the Muisca community um, is still existing. It's considered to be extinguished, but it's actually more alive than ever, and it's growing up in a way that it's involving us, and it's calling to the young, young generations to remind us, you are Muisca. Muisca in our native language, Mustubun, means people. So it, they are reminding us, you are people. Muisca, it's, it's not indigenous. Muisca is people. You are people. I am people. And we are all uh, gathering together as the new people. These people that come with a race awareness of what intuition is. And it's our job to bring intuition and rationality in balance. We need to make space again for the intuition. And within the Muiscas, we have this saying, uh, which is actually dancing and singing. So we leave dancing and singing because dancing and singing we leave. That means our life is a celebration. So I'm going to sing one song um, and um, then we will invite Mariana to show us a beautiful trailer of a project that is also raising awareness. It's very short, two minutes. Um, so I hope you had a good time. I hope this opened a little bit your understanding of the watchers and 
also we will share some words for those that want to share what their thoughts, their, your emotions, if you learned something or not. And I'm going to stop, stop talking because it's already uh, 10 minutes past the time. <laughs> This song is about the, the earth and the water. Madre Tierra is Mother Earth. And it speaks about our, how water flows from the mountains and we all go back always to the oceans. And from the oceans, we evaporate back into where we come from and so on and so on. de soledad en el norte de lo que queda es la llueve es perfecto se siente caminando Hacia el sur a las montañas, libre el agua me recuerda al rocioncito, crece y crece, madre tierra la vida como el agua vuelve, vuelve al mar. Madre tierra, la vida se evapora y vuelve, vuelve al mar. Okay. <laughs> so moving to the next part, going to the water. Moving to the next part, I will uh, invite Mariana to tell us a little bit about the film. We're going to see a little trailer of a film that is uh, coming, and um, it's definitely also part of searching for ideas, collaborations, and thoughts. Uh, she will tell us what's What's the, where is the movie? What's, what are we looking for? Yeah. Um, okay, well, first of all, thank you for all listening to this and being here and being interested in the ocean. Um, so before talking, how much time do I have? Um, <laughs> let's say, is it okay, five minutes? Okay, I, I think I want with, to. With the, with the with film the and everything? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, um, so basically before about talking about the film, I'm going to talk a little bit about the context of why we decided to make this film. Um, so, well, as you know, we're here in Colombia and in Colombia there is, um, there is a region or an area in the Pacific coast, I don't know if you guys are like geographically um, aware of um, how Colombia is, but so we have two coasts, the Caribbean and the Pacific. So this region is called um, Triuga. It's called the Gulf of Triuga and it's in the Pacific um, coast of the country. Um, so actually, I don't know if Felipe knew this when he like invited me to, to show this film, but Triuga, or, Triuga is located in a larger region called the Choco. Um, and the Choco is actually the rainiest um, place on the planet. So there's water everywhere all the time. It's, Full of like the mountains are full of rivers all the time it's raining all the time well not as much anymore because of global warming but um but yeah it's it's there's water everywhere and there's the ocean there's rivers there's rain there's clouds there's everything um and because of this because of the amount of water um all the sources all the water sources it's also one of the most biodiverse regions on the planet so um colombia in general has that um, that luck, I guess, which is um, we are like number one and two with Brazil in terms of biodiversity of everything like plants, um, yeah, flowers, um, birds, mammals, amphibians, reptiles, basically this is paradise. <laughs> um, so, so especially Triuga, the Gulf of Triuga is like this hot spot of biodiversity and not only in terms like local terms or national terms, but global. Um, and ironically, um, this region is also one of the most unexplored um, places in the planet because it's very remote. So there's no way to get there by land. So you have to either get a flight from Medellin to Nuki and then from there get a boat, um, which takes almost an entire day to get there, or you can go through a boat, which is I think like 10 hours from the nearest um, port, which is south. Um, so these two things kind of like converge. So it's the biodiversity, like the immense biodiversity and um, the, the unexploredness, <laughs> if that's a word, um, which make this place like incredibly, just incredible. So there's all like, the landscapes are just like completely sublime. You have like beaches that are kilometers, um, like virgin beaches and virgin forests and everything. And it sounds like 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 a place with like worth protecting, you know, especially like in these in the moment we are right now where we are being like more aware of how how much we depend on nature. Um, but ironically, the government, um, the current government in Colombia is trying to um, build what would be the second largest marine port in the country. So we have um, another one, which is currently the largest, but it's located in a place where it's not deep enough for the boats they want to start um, bringing for doing um, like commercial activities with Australia and with China, which would be a huge risk for natural resources. Um, so yeah, ironically, it's one, basically like the most amazing um, biodiverse, beautiful place in the world, but at the same time, it's under a huge risk of being completely um, like destroyed, basically, not only because of the, of the construction of the port, but because we believe that this would imply a huge number of um a huge amount of like deforestation of all the forests around the wildlife of course we all know china is you know number one in wildlife trafficking um so yeah it's a huge 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 risk which is um happening right now so um through a group of people um we decided to do something about this and for that, we decided to make a documentary, which is called, like in Spanish, it's Expedición Triuga, or in English, Expedition Triuga. I'll maybe write it down here. You can look for us like on Facebook and Instagram and whatever. Um, 
So, yeah, so we decided to make this film. Basically, we had two choices. So we had the choice of, you know, going like against the government and uh, against the government and being like, yeah, you know, you're going to destroy this and, and why this shouldn't be done. And, and like, who was behind this? Because, of course, there's a lot of money, there's a lot of power, all this stuff. Um, or, or take the other path, which is more like precisely to raise awareness and show what exists in this place. So we decided to go with that second option. Um, and we've been working on this film for almost four years now. Um, it's been a very long ride. <laughs> and basically what we did was join um, several um, scientists to go um, and basically do research and um, find a way to, fu to fund their projects in this area. And so they can tell us why this place is so important, why it's so beautiful, what exists, and what we might lose if we don't do anything about it. Um, so I think basically that's it. Um, I'm gonna show you the film. And then if you have any questions, I think we have a few minutes for that. Um, also, yeah, if you want to just send us later on, like, messages, questions, or whatever, that you can just look for us in, in Instagram. I'll leave, like, the little ad thingy um, later. And, yeah, so that's basically it. I don't know if it's on shared screen right now. Yep. Okay. So here we go. Este viaje para mí ha sido una remembranza. Yo estuve en el 80, 81. Estuve en un sitio similar o igual. Era un bosque así pristino, era una cosa absurda. Y después pasé a los 10 años y había más o menos una vaca por hectárea, porque ya habían tumbado toda la selva. Los indígenas ya no había, ya no había absolutamente nada. Cierto, esto es una fiesta a la vida realmente, donde todo está puesto de una manera que resalta la belleza y esto debemos es de conservarlo y apreciarlo porque es un lugar que debe permanecer como está en este momento. Pero la gente no cae en cuenta de algo que en realidad le regalaron, que es lo único que uno tiene en la vida. Le dieron un país que se llama Colombia. A nosotros decir, somos colombianos, todos somos dueños de este país.
Okay. So, um, coming back for a um, little closure of everything. Thank you, Mariana. Thank you, Judy, as well. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank this you, amazing, Mike. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, that, this has been, like, amazing. So, um, it's, like, it's, like, very rich, full of information and, uh, and experience and feelings and everything. Um, because we are kind of over time a bit, what I would suggest now is um, we could take uh, like 10 to 15 minutes for questions. Um, we still have people on board. Um, we have 27 people. I know some people also probably made different plans, but whoever would like to stay on board for questions, that would be great. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I know Divya, uh, you, you might have received some questions, I don't know, uh, like it really, or maybe because it was such an interactive session, maybe there were no questions. No, uh, no, uh, no questions yet, but if okay, you great. have any questions, you can just raise your hands and... Yeah, so how we do it um, is that we, um, you can at the bottom, at the bottom right, because we're still 30 people nearly, at the bottom right, you can ha you have three dots. And, um, uh, okay, me as a host, it looks a bit different, but there are three dots and there you, you should be able to raise your hand. So then um, we will see your, your hand raised and then we can like, um, we can actually call you to ask a question. Um, because we're 30 people, we would still maybe try this. Um, or if we're very organized and disciplined, we can also ask one after one. So um, whatever works for you. You can also raise your hand and we will then see you. Any questions for on anything? Or, um, uh, so there is one by Marion. Uh, and uh, he's asking if uh, do you do you want to ask the question? Yeah, so I switch you on, Marion. <laughs> ah, yes, you did already. Hello. Uh, well, thanks for this nice workshop, right? Um, like, and thanks for the movie because it's like pretty interconnecting with the project I was working since the last year. I was like very lucky to be in Colombia last year, and um. I got in contact with the reef project in San Andre Island and Providencia Island. And I was wondering if you know any information about that as well. Um, do you, which one? Because I, I know there's a few, maybe. Are you speaking about Coral in the Bath? Maybe? Maybe. <laughs> okay. I just know that it's like one of the biggest, um, reef uh, protection projects in the world next to like Belize in Mexico and um, yeah. the Grand Barrier Reef in Australia and like the whole archipelago of, of uh, San Andrea Island and Providencia it's like pretty fragile as well like, I mean it's for me one of the most beautiful places where I've been especially Providencia Island mm -hmm. um, and I really love the whole story and everything so I was working on a documentary project for this island as well but I'm wondering if you know difficult to get a real project. Like yeah. you can get only like maybe two it's it seems to be very protected probably as well by the government. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well I know I know there's a few projects. There's one I think you might be talking about Coral in the Bat, which is the one that I just sent right there. Mm -hmm. Um I know they work like in several um, countries and they do like res like coral restoration. Um, and yeah, they've done a lot of like really important work, especially with the communities. I know there's, there's um, especially an area, it's um, a marine, an MPA, a marine protected area. Um, it's called Seaflower Reserve. And it's actually, mm -hmm. they actually, they're doing like a lot of research right now. They do like um, scientific expeditions every year. To that, to that reserve, um, and they've actually found, like I think in the expedition they did last year, that we actually have the largest shark population in the Caribbean, like more than 
more than the Bahamas, more than like all these countries that we sometimes think have more, but it's just that shows the lack of research or the lack of information that comes from the lack of research. So yeah, I know they've been doing like projects with the people and I know they've always, they've, they've also been involved in like other research projects. Um, but yeah, if, if like, if you guys want to check it out, it's a really, really great project. I know they also have, um, they work with like several brands and stuff also to like raise awareness and try to get funding and stuff because as I mean, the hardest part in all of these projects to protect areas is the funding also. Um, but yeah, I think they're like a really good example um, of conservation projects or marine conservation projects that you could be looking at. But yeah, and yeah, it's, it's definitely like one of the most beautiful places in the country and I think in the world. So yeah, definitely check it out. I think it's Instagram. Um, I have a question for Felipe. Felipe, um... Uh, so I was just curious, I was just imagining your workshop being held uh, at a, uh, I don't know, really high up multinational uh, horrible company. <laughs> Have you ever held that kind of workshop in front of these kind of people? And if yes, what were their reactions? No, uh, no until, until now. Um, I haven't done anything in this type of um, like company or at that level. Um, I, I would love to <laughs> because I think this is part of what we are called to right now. Like when, when I talk about remembering that we are all Muisca, that we are all people, that we are all native. Um, we even have like uh, debates on how do we, like if we should continue using the world indigenous when we're referring to the communities because the, the same communities are also thinking how can we on change the concept just as this association as we were saying and a native is becoming something very important because with indigenous people think that unless you are raised within an indigenous community you're not indigenous but what we have to remember is that we're native uh, that we're native to something and that native uh, home is is this planet is the source is the water so to do something like this in a company would be actually making sense, reminding everybody working in, in such, such, um, uh, such high rank somehow and that have the possibility to stop a project or to change the way they understand their connection with water and to make them realize as humans as they are, that, that they are native. And sadly, we have such a huge organized system um, around money and how it works that it's um, it's making us very difficult to think differently but this is what we're trying to do just think differently because we cannot change from day to tomorrow it's just awakening one part of ourselves and the more we use it the the actions will start happening naturally in a different way so if if anybody um, wants or has the contact and would like me to go to them I would be very happy to, to make one of these workshops. Um, I, was, I also wanted to say something about the, the four questions that I placed at the beginning. Just take those questions at this moment and maybe from there um, in the next five minutes or before we close, if somebody wants to share, if you think now of a different skill that you have, did it change something from this first question from what you wrote? Do you think of your dream in a different way? Or do you understand something new about water? Is there something new of this um, short um, online workshop? And if there is and you feel like sharing, uh, feel free to do it. And also a big uh, like coming together in this. And if you have any ideas, any thoughts on what Mariana is working on um, with Expedition Tribuga, um, we will leave the, the email address and everything here. I will also leave my, my Instagram. Um, Sonido Sur. Um, there I promote a bit of um, ceremonies as well. If you want to also train or remember how to connect to intuition through meditation. And there's a little question here from Riz Cano. Uh, what is the current state of the port of Tribuga? What has been achieved with the project against this and how 
are the means of financing. Um, so um, just on a quick note, um, when it like when it comes to really detailed questions, now my suggestion would be to um, because we're like already really over time to maybe clarify this with via email. Yeah, if they can send that yeah. to your email. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know, Louise, I can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I will copy it's again just here. that, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, it's not that I don't want to talk about it further, but I just have some responsibility on like uh, timing and stuff. Um, so um, because we have such a like a really an amazing event full of really amazing rich content and like it's, it's we could like go from one to the next and I just really like the idea of um, what you su suggested, Felipe. Um, I would I would love to close this meeting with um, with with this like remark of like maybe looking at the things we wrote down, and after having seen the the two clips, what we actually maybe we can have one or two more voices from people to actually say if they have if they have a new view on like things. Um, sorry, this is like was my phone. Um, so a new view on things um, like when it like the water what we've learned on water for example um, I would I mean I don't know this is something I would I would close with today if we if we can because like some people haven't said anything and I would love to close the session with this because it's I think it's pretty beautiful and If there are any volunteers. So, I mean, I, for me, um, the one thing I've noticed again when I watched the first clip also was um, that, yeah, so it's really that whatever we live, how we live, and um, really goes into the water and goes into the ocean, and that really there is this circle like this the cycle of things and whatever we give live act how we act whatever we do um comes back to us it's like whatever is out there it goes to nature and it also comes back to us so um that was this really beautiful image also i found Anyone else? Yeah, Charlene. Ah, for me it's loud. I think. Ah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I just uh, wanted to say that I, I liked um, how you uh, explained to us that you can see things differently, including water. You know that nothing, that not everything has to be connected to like a rational thought, but but that you can even have an intuition not just about yourself and people but also about like something like water that was new to me because i i um i think about those concepts like with the spirit and the mind and the soul and the body or i try to think about them more often but i sometimes it's difficult for me to apply them to my to my life and my surroundings and to really uh, i don't know yeah think think like that you know to or to not think like that However, you uh, want to, I don't know how, I don't know. But anyway, I just wanted to say, yeah, I think it's um, remarkable to think about water as something more than just water, you know, that's all. Thank you. Uh, Fiona, you wanted to say something as well? No. Ah, okay, sorry, <laughs> on already, okay. Uh, yeah, I just uh, wanted to say that I really like um, the picture of uh, seeing the ocean connected with the rivers as yeah, uh, something which connects us to the world and not see ourselves individually, but in the context of, of the world and how that mirrors to, the, to our bodies as, uh, as well and to our blood system, which yeah, I really like the picture and the connection to to see 
um, yeah, our blood system and our heart um, mirrors in the rivers and the ocean and mm -hmm. the picture I liked. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Anyone else? No? Okay. Yeah, so, um, yes, I feel like we should probably, yeah, we could set up another event and just talk about that movie project on top because it's just so rich of information, but let's get to it later. And um, I know we have the contact now and then we can build on it. I know you're also, it's at the beginning and uh, what you said also, Mariana, uh, so we can surely... I know it's it's going to be uh, it looks amazing already from the pictures so uh, we'll get to that for sure happy to support it um yeah well thank you so much for like staying on board <laughs> I know we're half an hour over time but it was just so rich such a rich se session and um really like very relaxing and calming at the same time I hope this was not the last one um and yeah so um at this point i can just say um yeah if whatever you find online on ocean now we will continue with these kind of sessions also it's going to be a packed program very mixed program for people who look into these kind of sessions but also into discussions and what we can do like on a on all sorts of action levels of society really um and yeah so at this point i think i don't have much else to add just thank you so much for your time and um Philippe, i hope to see you soon again when you like come back to berlin uh, <laughs> um and yes yeah, so sending love and hugs to the world wherever you all might be um and have a really nice evening thank you everyone thank you thank for you. listening and taking this time also to think crazy and have another perspective of watcher and um, any questions that you have also about the communities about the work that we're doing the first little trailer that we show at the beginning is also part of a project that it's just beginning um, and we will release little by little what's happening here it's also uh, to, to come together as the planet that we are so um, yeah nothing else but thank you and thank you Michael because the, the work you guys are doing raising awareness about the ocean is basically what we are doing raising awareness about the water and about the the mother planet that we have in the entire organism that we make part of. thank you mike thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. thanks mariana and uh um sorry i forgot your name sorry yeah. yuri yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have a really nice evening have thank a nice you. day thank you thank you hi Bye. Bye, everyone.